This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Well, imagine looking around after your electrical contractor is done with your home renovation and you see this. Does that look safe to you? Can you assume it's okay because you hired someone to do it? Or would you know simply by looking at this that the problem with this gas furnace is that the gas line is not 18 inches from the floor. You may not see a problem, but a code enforcement officer will. So if you're planning a home improvement project, you want to make sure all of the work being done is up to code. If you receive a notice that your home isn't up to par, it could cost you. In today's Angie's List report, why you shouldn't ignore a code violation. It didn't take long for homeowner Maureen Dunlap to figure out something was wrong after having a new furnace installed. It was held together with some duct tape or furnace tape and flimsy board. And when, when the furnace came on, the walls would suck in, you know, and I knew that one right. Dunlap called a different contractor for a second opinion who found a number of code violations. As far as the wires passing through the cabinet, what, what can happen there is the wire can rub into the metal and short out. That can cause a potential fire. It can cause a loss of a control, whether it be electrical component or something like that, even electrical shock to the homeowner. Angie's List says any new renovation work must meet current code at the time it's performed. Code violations often involve electrical, plumbing, or structural issues that pose some sort of safety hazard. Ignoring a code violation could be an expensive mistake. If you ignore code violations in your home, you might find that you face financial fines as well as legal ramifications, so it's really important that you bring things up to code when you discover them. So what should you do if you discover a code violation? When remodeling, you may find that your house isn't up to code in some areas, whether it's electrical or plumbing, for example, but it's important to go ahead and bring it up to code because when you'd want to sell your house in the future, it'll likely come up in the inspection and it could cause you to lose a deal. The most common code violations we normally find is breakers are too large for the appliance that they're serving. Uh, in some cases, the wiring's not sized properly, and a breaker is a point of contact when that is, if something goes wrong, that's supposed to give out first to protect the home, protect the equipment and everything. If you have a breaker that's too large, what's going to happen is something else is going to give, and that could be a potential fire. And if you're not sure you really have a code violation? If you find that a contractor tells you that you have a code violation and you're unsure whether or not you really do, don't hesitate, get a second opinion. You can hire another contractor to come out and just do an inspection, for example. Additionally, contact your local code enforcement agency and they can help you as well. So, what do you do to correct any code issues you have? Well, first, find a contractor who specializes in addressing code violations that pertain to your particular issue. Anytime a contractor tells you that you have a code violation, get a second opinion of at least two more reputable professionals. And if you're still not sure about what you're hearing and seeing, contact your local code enforcement agency. They'll let you know for sure. Now, obviously, any code violations that you need to fix are going to cost money. And in some cases, lots of money. So wouldn't it be nice to have some help paying for those fixes? Well, you might be able to get that help. Joining us today to tell us more is State Farm Insurance Agent Matt Basile of Dover. Welcome, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. It's well, nice first of all, um, homeowners can get some financial assistance when it comes to code they violations. They certainly tell us about can. That. If, um, if whatever caused the, the event uh, was something that's a name peril under your homeowner's policy, it is certainly something that we can cover. And there's also an endorsement on everyone's policy or anything that's been written in the last couple of years, for the most part, should have it already. But it's a good idea for people to contract their insurance professional to find out if it's, that's there to bring things back up to code. Okay, now when you say event, yes. you mean something that has happened, something that's going to re require a right. repair. It would, ha it would have to be something that requires a pair repair. We couldn't. Uh, you can't really use insurance as a maintenance system for your home. Right. It's there specifically for named perils and catastrophes. We're, we're there to help folks recover from the unexpected and, and not, not just, just home maintenance. So with this rider, there are some stipulations as far as what There certainly are. It. There certainly are. Um, and as you see, the, it has to be a covered loss, which we talked about. Those right. examples would be fire loss, uh, water damage due to wind, hail, storm, yeah. uh, et cetera. So. Okay. so like we just learned, you want to hire a contractor um, to make sure that you get up to par, your yeah. house up to par. Yeah. What are some things to remember when we're hiring someone? Uh, you have to do your due diligence. I know you want to get things done quickly, but you certainly want to contact the Better Business Bureau mm -hmm. uh, online. They've got great resources. You can read reviews. 
Uh, you can also look at the responses to those reviews. You want to talk to people who are licensed and insured, obviously. Right. Um, you want everything in writing, time frame, estimate, uh, and all the payment schedules. <coughs> and then make sure you're talk reaching out to more than one. And, and, and follow up on references too. References are always good. Usually word of mouth is the best way to find a contract. Now I want to get this done now, <coughs> but that's not the best way to go, is it? Well, you know, it, not necessarily. No. It's not. Uh, unless you know somebody that's done work for you before, you know they're currently licensed and insured, and you have other folks who've used them. I, I say go ahead, but most of the time it's better to get at least two estimates before and, you and take your time. Sure, and take your going time. through the process. But if you do rush and and you hire someone and then mm -hmm. you find someone better, right. y Is there anything you can do? There is a way to opt out of a contract in most cases, uh, and you'll have to contact the Federal Trade Commission to figure that out exactly. But usually it's a three-day window you have. So if you do find a problem, you have to get on it immediately. You want to make sure you you do that. Quick. With something like this, there's always scammers that come out. Can you give us some idea of what to look for? To, to be aware that it might be a scam coming our way? Well, I've had um, unsolicited services is a perfect example. I've had someone come out in our community and they'll drive around and they've got a big bucket on the back of their truck yeah. and they say they're, they're going to go ahead and cover your driveway for you. Right. You don't know what's in that bucket, you know. And, yeah, and okay. the, and the, and the, so you have to be careful with, with those t type of folks. Um, and again, you're looking for licensed insured. You want people that come in and say they have leftover products from another, su another job oh. they want to use on your site. That's yeah. a bad idea. Um, out of town, unbranded vehicles uh, is another one, and uh, anybody who's offering discounts that are that don't seem right, uh, the, most of the time they're not too good to be true. The cash only right now is not good. Cash either, only is rough. Yes, you certainly yeah. want everything written out. Like I said, written out with a schedule, and it, uh, so everything's in writing. Some good things to watch yeah. for. Thank you so Thanks much for coming in, Matt. Thanks. Great information. And if you'd like more information from Matt and State Farm Insurance on keeping your home up to code, go to DelmarvaLife.com and click on the Show tab. Still to come on Dumb Arbor Life, we know that the organizers of OC Bike Fest are gearing up for the big event set to take place this weekend. Brian Spiros is in Ocean City with a preview. Brian? Well, Jimmy and Lisa, how do you like my new bike? Just kidding, it's not mine. You know, OC Bike Fest is going to attract thousands of people. Coming up, we'll give you all the details of what's going on during the four-day celebration. You don't want to miss it. You're watching Delmarva Life. We will be right back.